On day one, I spawned in as a baby elemental warden. Whoa, I can't wait to see what kind of powers I have. I was in an above ground ancient city and standing in front of me was another warden with some strange warden creatures. My son, you will be a valuable asset for our side of this war. Father, what do you mean by our side? Horn sounded and I saw another warden start to attack the city. Why did this warden look different? You have taken it too far this time. I have done what needs to be done. The other warden and his men were quickly overpowering my father. No, stop. Leave him alone. I summoned lightning from the sky. Whoa, I could do that? There are too many. So I tried to run, but the evil warden stood in front of me and forced me to leave with him and his army. Father, please help. I will find you, Fozo. I promise. On day two, the evil warden led me to a large destroyed city. Here, there are even more odd warden mobs. He led me toward the center and said to one of the other wardens, The elemental powers are uncontrollable. We cannot allow him this. He must be disposed of. Disposed of? What do you mean? Suddenly, a group of warden stalkers started to rush at me from all sides. Leave me alone. I let out a large fire blast that stunned and caught the group of them on fire. The evil warden shot a sonic boom at me that nearly missed. I got scared and shot a sonic boom back at him. But it wasn't an ordinary sonic boom. It was an elementally infused one. With everyone stunned, it was my chance to escape. After him, you fool. On day three, I ran through the world knowing those monsters would be chasing after me. I needed to get away from my pursuers. I saw buildings in the distance and I rushed towards them. Maybe I can hide somewhere in here. As I got closer, I realized it was a village, but there was so much destruction. I walked through the village and saw an injured villager. Are you okay? What happened to this place? Is that an elemental warden? Stay away from me. Ah! Whoa, whoa, just, just take it easy, man. I'm trying to help you. He told me the war between the wardens has brought nothing but misery to this world. They used to live in peace. There were talks about an elemental warden that would be made to end it all. Our conversation was interrupted by the evil warden's men arriving at the city. Hey, over here. There he is. Get him. I started to run away from the village, but I knew the monsters would be close behind me. Oh man, how am I going to get out of this one? Baby warden, come here, quick. I saw a bat asking me to come with him. I just hope I can trust this guy. I started to follow the bat. On day four, the bat and I arrived at a large, lush cave that was filled with small houses. What is going on with this place? We are trying to hide out from the war on the surface. Everyone kept referring to this war between the wardens. It seemed to be affecting all creatures, big and small. The bat introduced himself as Echo and told me that the war had resulted in a lot of collateral damage. Because the wardens were blind, they were unable to distinguish between the noises made from their enemy and innocent creatures. That is awful. I asked him how he could help and Echo told me that I must stay safe. In time, I will be a valuable asset once I'm stronger. You're the only way to put an end to it. The bat said I seemed different from the other wardens. There was something very special about me, and he offered me a place at the base. I was about to accept his offer, but I remembered my father. I have to find him. I felt like he was in grave danger. I began to leave the cave and head out for our ancient city. I returned to my home and saw that it was totally different from when I spawned in. There was a lot of destruction from the evil warden's attack. The city looked totally abandoned. I made my way around and I found a chest. Inside of it was a set of stone tools and some food. I decided I would repair the city for when everyone arrived back. I went out and gathered materials to repair some of the buildings. I returned and started my work. Once I finished, I heard a strange noise coming from behind me and realized it was coming from the center building. What? is that? I felt drawn to the portal, almost as if it was pulling towards me. I then began to walk towards it. Bozo, is that you? Huh? What? I turned and saw one of the warden creatures from day one. I looked back at the portal, but it was no longer ignited. Uh, did, did you see that? The, the portal, it was lit. What are you talking about? Your father went looking for you. He's somewhere on the battlefield. The battlefield? Oh no. I need to go save him. I rushed off as fast as I could. 
On day six, I arrived at the battlefield. Everywhere I looked, there was nothing but destruction and chaos. I heard shouting nearby, and I headed toward it. I saw my father, and he was surrounded by a group of crazy-looking skeletons. I was afraid, but I had to help him. Get back! To my surprise, I let out a big gust of wind energy and knocked the monsters away from my father. Good work, son. Before I could reply, they were back fighting with us again. I tried to use my elemental powers, but I didn't seem to be able to control them. Oh, no. No. Oh no, please work. I used my elemental sonic boom and was able to take them all down. And before I knew it, I grew into an adult-sized warden with 30 hearts. I'm just as big as you, dad. I am so proud of you, son. Now come on, we have to get out of here. On day seven, we escaped from the battlefield and made it to a clearing. My father was leading me somewhere, but I wasn't sure where. Dad, can we stop? I need to catch my breath. No time, the fight has already begun. I told my father that I was glad to see him alive and safe. He felt the same way too, but told me that we needed to go somewhere before returning home. We made it to what seemed like a warden camp. What are we doing here? This is one of the evil warden's camps. Use your powers to destroy this place. Destroy it? Why? Wouldn't we be destroying the warden's homes? My father told me that this would be the best way to end this war. I hesitated for a moment, but obeyed my father and destroyed the evil warden's camp. You've made the right choice, son. Now let us return home. As my father left, I looked at the burning camp for a moment, wondering if I made the right choice. We made it back to our ancient city base. I was still caught up on what had happened. My father continued further into the city while I stopped. Why were we fighting this? What could his motives be? He hasn't told you? Tell me what? Come with me. As I followed him toward my father, he told me the story. He said that there were once three friends. My father, my mother, and the evil warden named Dalo. The wardens lived happily thanks to them, and there was a long time of peace and prosperity in the warden community. The evil warden Warden wasn't happy and grew jealous of my father and mother. He spread lies to his followers that father and mother were going to start a war and ruin their peace. One night, he snuck into the ancient city and killed my mom. Nothing in this world has been the same since. I knew my father didn't want this war, but after my mother's death, he must have felt like he had no choice. I looked at my father and told him I was ready to keep fighting for our people. This needs to end now. Good. I have a special mission for you. You retrieve this. We're sure to finally end this war. On days 9 to 10, I was following my father's instructions when I came to a large castle. This must be the evil warden's base like my father had described. Father told me that I needed to steal a special sword from there. With that, we would greatly weaken the evil warden's ability to hurt our people. I snuck my way inside the base and made it to the evil warden's treasury. It was a warden sword. Man, this is gonna be a piece of cake. Suddenly the guards showed up, so I had no choice but to fight them. I used my fire abilities to burn the creatures and quickly defeated them. I rushed out of the treasury. As I made my way towards the exit, the evil warden was standing there waiting for me. Give me back the sword, boy. And why would I do that? You killed my mother and started this war. Now I'm going to end it. I would never kill your mother. Your father is lying to you. Now give me back the sword. My father would never lie to me. In my rage, I summoned an ice ball that hit the evil warden, freezing him in place. This gave me a enough time to escape. As I made my way back to my father's camp, Echo surprised me. Bozo, I need your help. Whoa, a little heads up would have been nice. You know I'm blind. He told me that the refugees at his camp were starving and needed help finding food. I told them that I needed to go back to my father quickly, but Echo urged me to help. We returned to the refugee camp and I saw everyone was starving. I went into the world and collected seeds. While I was out, I found a group of chickens. I led them back to the camp and built them a nice pen to stay in. Once I finished, I got to work making a farm. Hopefully this will keep everyone fed for now. And before I could leave, Echo stopped me. The offer still stands if you want to stay. Echo, I can't stay here. I have to help my father end this war. I left the camp and ran into a strange warden I had never seen before. So you're the elemental warden? Warden, huh? Who are you? The warden called himself Abel and said that he knew more about the war than my father let on. It wasn't Dalo who started this war. It was your father. You should be more careful around him. My father started this war? No, 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 no. There's no way. I need to go back home. I left Abel and headed off. <laughs> Excellent. All according to plan.
On days 13 to 14, I continued my travels toward my house. What did Abel even mean? My father started the war? No, I didn't want to believe him, but I felt this overwhelming feeling that something wasn't right. I arrived at camp. Suddenly, I looked up at the structure in the center. Why did this seem to be constantly calling my name? Fozo, it's good to see you. Uh, father, I was able to get the sword. Now that evil warden will be much weaker. My father told me to keep it. You'll need it. Come with me. Wait, I have to ask you something. I asked my dad about the start of the war and if he had attacked the evil warden first. But one thing's for certain, I did not want to tell him about Abel. Who knows if that guy was crazy or not. My father just shook his head. He killed your mother. And that is why we were fighting this war. He then told me that he had no time to discuss any of this anymore. Our men were apparently under attack and needed my help. My help? All right, I trust you. And plus, there was no reason he would lie to me. He is my dad after all. I had to help our people. I rushed off toward the attack. I made it to the castle and the wardens were all being attacked by him and his soldiers. The evil warden overpowered the men and entered the city. Stop, you don't need to do this. His men heard me and they turned all their attention toward me. They began to rush and I did my best to avoid their attacks. I used my elemental sonic boom to take most of them down and finish the rest off with my lightning ability. Oh man, I had to get in there and stop him. Now I rushed after him. I arrived inside the castle as the evil warden took down one of the commanders of our army. No, you're a monster. You'll pay for what you've done. I am not the monster who started this. You can thank your father for that. Lies. We started a fight and I can feel my emotions surging. In my anger, I started to use all my elemental powers in quick succession. It seemed as though all of them were dealing more and more damage. Exactly why we've never brought elements into this war. You shouldn't exist. Take this. I hit him with my sonic boom. He stood before me, defeated. But then I heard Abel's voice in my head. It was your father. You should be more careful around him. Oh, uh, uh, what? I stood there looking at the evil warden when he said, Do it. Finish what my best friend started. His best friend? My father? No. What is actually going on? I ran away from him as fast as I could. I need to talk to my father now. As I made my way back to confront my father, I ran into Abel again. Fozo, you seem to be down. What's wrong? I told Abel how I could have ended Dalo, but chose not to do it. It just didn't feel right. I could have ended the war. Man. And plus, he kept telling me what you told me. I confided my feelings to Abel about all of this. For some weird reason, I felt like I could trust him. It's okay, Fozo. You made the right decision, but you still need to end this war. Abel told me that if we don't end this war, then everyone's going to lose. So many creatures will be harmed if the war continues. He handed me an orb and told me only to use it if it was absolutely necessary. What is this, Abel? If things go south with your father, this will briefly stun everyone around you, giving you enough time to escape. Thanks. I really appreciate your help. Now, I'm going to end this war once and for all. Good luck, Fozo. <laughs> you foolish warden. On days 21 to 23, I returned to our ancient city home. I confronted my dad. So, when were you going to admit it? Admit what? Stop the act. You attacked Adalo first. I know all about how you started this war, and you refuse to admit it. My father once again denied what I was saying. You don't know what was taken from me. You'll be punished until you learn your place. All my father's men started to rush at me and attack. They were trying to throw me in prison. I begged them to stop, but none of them would listen to me. I didn't want to cause any more harm to anyone in this world, so I pulled out the orb Abel had given me, and I activated it. There was a strange ringing noise, and then a massive flash of light. Ugh. I don't feel so good. Ugh. On days 24 to 26, I woke up. Everyone in the ancient city was gone. Why do I feel so weak? Suddenly, Abel arrived and walked up to me. What have you done? Why did the orb not work, Abel? It worked as intended, you fool. My name is not Abel. It is Abaddon. Ah! What's happening? Suddenly, he teleported me to a dark and desolate place. Everything looked so strange. I turned around and saw Abaddon's true form. And he was absolutely terrifying. He told me that thanks to me, all of my elements were gone and no one could stop him. 
It was I who started this war. I was the one that killed your stupid mother. Wait, what? It was you all along? Soon both sides of this war shall destroy themselves. At once I am free. I can finally rid this world of wardens, and the world shall be mine. With your powers gone, there's no hope to stop me. Ha 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 ha! I was deceived by literally everyone. I need to get my powers back somehow. There's still time. I can make this right. Clearly, there was something bigger going on in this world than the war itself. I decided to go to Echo's refugee camp. I needed to ask for help. What happened to you, Fozo? Go ahead and make yourself at home. I don't have time to explain. I felt so weak. I needed to rest. I created a small base for myself. I then went to bed and got some rest. I need to get my powers back. And once I do, I won't let Abaddon win. On days 27 to 29, I woke up and told Echo about my encounter with Abaddon and what I had seen on the other side. In order to stop him, I will have to get all my elemental powers back. But I don't know where to start. Do you have any leads? on the elemental powers? I told them I unfortunately had no idea what happened to them. It sounds like they weren't destroyed though. Maybe they are missing in the world and you can find them. What he was saying seemed to be right. Dalo had told me the elements were incredibly powerful so they couldn't be destroyed. It seems as though Abaddon is going to stop at nothing to rid the entire world of the wardens. I have to warn the other ones and fast. Echo asked how I would be able to stop the fighting. There was no way either side would listen to me. I have to try. If I get my powers back I will be able to save everyone. On days 30 to 32, I went into the battlefield and my father's forces were attacking Dalos. Something was strange about the warden leading the charge. He used electricity on Dalos' soldiers. Wait a minute. That must be the lightning element. It seems to have attached itself to one of my father's men. Haha! <laughs> I've never felt so powerful! Hey, you're using my power! Give it back to me! You want your power so badly? Here! He shot me with a lightning blast! Ah! Ouch. That took a lot of my heart. I gotta stop this guy before he hurts more people. He continued to use my electric powers against me. I rush at him, wielding my warden sword. I hope this does the trick. This warden was not ready for me to be so powerful without my elements. I continue to overpower him until I finally defeated him. After he went, I can tell my lightning element returned. This is great. One down, three to go. Now, who has the other elements? With this new power, nothing will stop us! There has to be something I could do to make this right. Uh, maybe I can talk to Dalo? I made it to the Evil Warden's base and entered. The guards were confused by my arrival, but I told them that I needed to speak with their leader. Listen, Dalo, we need to put aside our differences, okay? You must listen to me. And why is that? You seem to have lost something. Is that why you are here? I told them there was something far more dangerous going on in this world. I was tricked by someone named Abaddon. Did you say Abaddon? Yeah, do you know him? Dalo began to tell me the story of Abaddon. He had been a warden that lived in their community. His ambition and quest for power led him to create a portal in the center of the ancient city, but the powers from the other side pulled him in, leaving him stuck. Through time, he finally found a way to come back, but was no longer a warden. He was something far more terrifying. It seemed as though the other side of the portal changed him. All he wanted was help from the other wardens, but they didn't listen. My father and Dalo fought against him and forced him back inside the portal. We fled and created the new city above ground. It was a regretful action. Maybe there was something you could have done to help him. He told me that if I wanted to learn more, I would have to travel to the first ancient city and see for myself. On days 36 to 38, I arrived at the first ancient city and found it completely covered in some strange blocks. This looks like what Abaddon had shown me. How was it here though? I kept looking for any clues when suddenly I got surprised by a group of skeletons. The group rushed at me, and I tried to use my electric powers, but I was unable to. My lightning was blocked by the cave above. Thankfully, I was extremely strong and took them all out. I reached the portal and noticed that it started flickering. I heard the ominous drone I had heard before. All of a sudden, I was back in Abaddon's lair, and he was standing before me. Listen, Abaddon, I've come to reason with you. Dala wanted me to apologize for not trying to help you back then, and we can still save you. You. What makes you think I want to be saved? This is everything I've ever 
you're wanted. You're better than this. You don't? Some people don't want to be saved, Fozo. <laughs> Count the last days of your world. He rushed at me to attack me, and there was a blinding flash of light. Days 39 to 41, I was standing back in front of the portal. Man, I was going to need a way to bring all of the wardens together to stop this monster. But instead, they're all fighting in their own war. It was clear that his time on the other side of this portal had increased his powers. I headed off towards Echo's cave to check on the refugees. When I arrived, Echo was extremely happy to see me. Where have you been? I'll tell you later. I need to clear my head. I decided the best way to relax was to upgrade my home. I started to expand it and make it feel more fit for the elemental warden. I caught Echo up on where I had been and told him that I didn't know if I would be able to save everyone. Look around, Fozo. Everyone here is so grateful to have you. You bring these creatures hope that the war can be ended. He told me that I couldn't give up now. Thanks for your support, Echo. You're a good friend. You will go there and end this war. Do what my son could not. As you wish. I made my way towards Dalo's base. As I approached, I could see smoke. Oh no, this can't be good. I rushed inside and saw parts were frozen over. This must have been the work of whoever has my ice elements. I went to Dalo's quarters and there was a warden. He was trying to trap Dalo in ice. <laughs> Ozo, run! It seems that I've missed one. No matter. Soon you will be frozen just like the rest. Hey, leave him alone! He blasted me with ice, and I was stuck in place! I blasted the warden with an electric shock and broke out of the ice. I dodged the warden's ice and started to fight him with my sword. As I slashed him down, I can tell that he was getting weak. Your father would be disappointed. I defeated him, and as I did, I gained my ice element back. Look at that! I have half of my powers. Maybe when I have all of them, there's a way that I can stop Abaddon. I freed Dalo, and he thanked me for helping. I told him about the ancient city and the strange blocks I had found. Come with me right now. Days 45 to 47, I followed Dalo to a building deep in a forest. What was this place, and why are we here? I need to know if what you saw is the same material we wrote about. We went inside the library and began to search the books that were inside. Finally, Dalo found what he was looking for. Read this and tell me if it describes the blocks. I began to read a dark block with glowing spots that do not illuminate the surroundings. That seems to be what I saw. He told me to continue reading. The block was said to be the absence of life and elements. It did not originate in this world. These blocks fear the elements because the elements bring life to whatever they touch. When combined, they can defeat the skulk. What does that mean? Those blocks come from the other side side. We know the existence of them from Abaddon's description. Your elemental powers can stop what he has gained from the other side. I guess it's up to me to regain all my powers and defeat this guy then. We started to head back to base. On days 48 to 50, as we traveled back, my new companion told me he needed to rest for a minute. He wasn't used to traveling this much as a leader. I got to work and built us a small camp to stay at. I started to ask him about the times before the war, and he said, Things were much simpler. Your Father, mother, and I were great friends. Together we ruled over all the wars. I don't understand how he could think I was capable of killing your mother. Everyone in this war had tried to manipulate me. But you, Dalo, you seem to be speaking of the truth. It was clear that he saw the bigger picture going in on the fight. I asked him how he was able to force Abaddon back into the portal. Dalo told me that after they had forced him into the portal, they were able to break it with their sonic booms. What was left behind was a strange item. A constant drone rang out from it. Before I can ask him if this was the same drone I heard, a warden stalker rushed towards us and told us that a wind element warden was attacking their men. All right, Dalo, rest up. I'll take care of this. I rushed off to confront him. Hopefully, I can regain another one of my powers back. I made it to the desert and found the wardens being blown away by another one. He must have my wind element. This power has so much freedom. How about you leave them alone and pick on some Someone with powers. I blasted the warden with an ice blast and froze him in place. Gah! Blasted warden! Fight fair! He freed himself from the ice and tried to hit 
maybe with gusts of wind. Man, these things hurt. I use an electric shock to quickly subdue the wind warden. Suddenly, my father appeared. Why did he look so different? You don't deserve this element. I watched as my father took down the warden with a fire blast and stole the wind element. And from the looks of it, he had my fire element as well. Father, what are you doing? This is madness. Please, just, just stop all of this fighting. He shot me with fire and wind, taking away half of my heart. Stay away from me, Fozo. This is my last warning. I watched as my father made quick work of the other wardens, and then he walked off. Father, no! Man, I couldn't believe that my father would do this. Why would he try to take my powers away? I thought I knew him, but now I don't anymore. Now Dalo, who I thought was the bad guy, is treating me better. This is just frustrating. It was so frustrating that I destroyed a nearby pillar with lightning. I decided to return to the refugee camp to clear my head. Fozo, you're... Not now, Echo. I need to be by myself for a minute. I went to bed and slept with my thoughts. Abaddon, I'll destroy you! Fool, you cannot! This is but a dream! What do you want? A deal! You know why this war started! Your dear was killed by your own best friend! You wanna end this war? Free me! And I will bring your wife back! On days 57 to 59, I woke up and started talking to Echo about my father. That's hard to deal with. I told him how lost I felt and how ashamed I was of what he has become. He doesn't seem to understand the dangers we are facing. I think he's blinded by everything that happened with my mom. If you want to make a difference right now, these people could really use your help. I looked around at all the refugees and Echo was right. I couldn't control this, but I could help them all right now. We started by expanding the farm so all the animals would have plenty of food. Once we were finished, we got to work building larger houses for the other refugees. Everyone deserved a nice, cozy place to live in. As I was finishing, Echo rushed towards me. What is it? Your father! He's going crazy! He's burning down forests nearby! What could he possibly gain from this? I need to stop him right now. On days 60 to 62, I found my father out in the forest, burning it down to the ground. Dolo! Come out here and let us finish this war once and for all! I shot my father with an ice blast and stuck him to the ground. Father, you need to stop. You're hurting the innocent. My father broke out of the ice and turned to face me. This was the only way to bring back your mother. Abaddon promised me. I told my dad that mother is gone and Abaddon would never bring her back. Dalo did not kill her, but he didn't seem to listen. Father, if you let Abaddon out, the world is doomed. I don't care. I can't trust what you're saying. You sided with Dalo too. He hit me with a fireball and greatly weakened me. No, why? I used my electricity to stun him, and it worked. I then used that opportunity to escape him while I could. I arrived at Dalo's base. It looked like they were hard at work repairing the damage that was done. I quickly rushed to him. He asked me what the deal was, and I told him it was my father. He's going to free Abaddon. Why would he do that? What could he possibly gain? I told him that he believed he would bring my mother back if he did it for him. I have to go and stop him. No, you have something much more important that you need to learn. Follow this. He dropped me a map and told me I need to travel here. He then said, I will confront your father. No son should have to face his father in battle. I don't know, Dalo. This doesn't seem right. But Dalo insisted. I said goodbye and began to follow the map. After a while of traveling, I came across a temple. I began to walk inside. Stop! You cannot do this! How dare you talk to me like this after everything I've done for you! I didn't do it! We were like brothers! We trapped Abaddon to save this world! Why would you set him free? I have to! I want her back more than anything! You will not stop me! Then you leave me no choice. On days 66 to 68, I found myself inside the temple. I stepped on one of the skulk blocks, and suddenly there was a loud rumbling. A giant worm appeared in front of me. I prepared for a fight, but the worm just looked at me. My name is Fozo. What is this place? Hello, Fozo. I am the Skulk Queen, the guardian of the Skulk here. I told her that Dalo sent me and told her about Abaddon. Are you from the other side as well? Yes, and I am the only one who stands between Abaddon and 
his pursuit of skunkifying the world. She told me that I was the key to defeating him, but she could see I was missing some of my elements. The skulk gave me a set of warden armor to protect me in the fights to come. If your father really plans to open the portal, then you have no choice but to end him for the sake of the world. You need your elemental powers. What? I will have to kill my, my own father? No! How can I do that? I need to find my father and Dalo. There must be a way to end this without fighting. There has to be. I left the Skulk Temple and made my way back to Dalo. You don't need to do this. I must, old friend, for the sake of my wife. And what about your son? My son will understand. Farewell, old friend. On days 69 to 71, I was heading towards Dalo's base to talk with him. When I saw him walking slowly towards me, he looked badly injured. No, 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 no. What happened to you? Your father. He is going to open the portal. I couldn't stop him. Maybe there's still reasoning with him. We need to go and talk to him right now. It's over for me, Fozo. You have to make the choice between him and the world. Wait, wait, wait. No, no. Dalo. Dalo. No. This can't be happening. I need to find my father. Father, fast! I arrived as my father was making his way to the portal. Stop! You cannot go through with this! Abaddon cannot be trusted! You don't understand, you foolish child! I was hit with a fire blast that knocked me back! Dad, please! Don't do this! I have to do this! He touched the heart of the portal frame, and there was a massive flash of light and an explosion! After the explosion, Abaddon was physically in front of us! Finally! Free at last! Abaddon, I've held my end of the bargain! Now give me my wife! I was never going to bring your wife back! It was me who killed your wife, you fool! Abaddon knocked him out of the way! I immediately shot him with my lightning, but he was unaffected and blasted me with fire! Ah! The fire felt way stronger than father's! I was losing a lot of hearts! Father, please! I need your help! We have to end him before he affects the actual world! What? What have I done? I've killed Dolo! My father was still shocked by the news he heard. I turned to face this monstrosity alone. I tried to use my powers against him, but they had little effect. Foolish warden, no one can stop me now. This world belongs to Abaddon! Abaddon swung his arm and knocked father and I out of the area. On day 75 to 77, we landed in a snow biome far away from the ancient city. As we got up, up, I asked my father why he killed Dalo. All he said was he doesn't know. That's not good enough. I blasted him with a bolt of lightning. He was your friend, your best friend, and you killed him. I froze him with my ice powers. Do you think I wanted to kill him? I dodged the fireball and shot him with a bolt of lightning again. You were tricked, father, just like me. And now we both have to live with it. Father knocked me with a large fire blast. You can't do this alone. We have to work together. Give me my powers so I can fix this. I started all this wrong in the world. I'll fix it myself. He rushed off and I was left standing there. The Skulk Queen told me I might have to take him down to save the world. But I don't know if I had what it took. On days 78 to 80, I made it back to the refugee camp. Echo was there waiting for me with the other refugees. Were you guys waiting for me or? That's right, Fozo. We know what's going on and we want to help. The refugees agreed with Echo and they told me that they wanted to help me after everything that I've done for them. Oh, thanks guys. I really appreciate this. Suddenly, I remembered what my father said earlier. What did he mean when he said, fix our mistakes as wardens? The sheep continued to tell me that the original leader wielded a horn that would summon the attention of all the wardens. Hopefully, I can find the horn somewhere in the first ancient city. Maybe with that, I can use it to once again unite the wardens. On days 81 to 85, I traveled back to the first ancient city. I noticed this Skulk had spread more since the last time I'd been here. I started to look around for the horn in various chests that were scattered around the area. I found absolutely nothing until I walked up to one of the chests and yes, there it was, the warden horn. As I grabbed it, I felt rumbling in the ground and heard a strange sound coming from the portal. Suddenly, swarms of undead creatures started to come from the other side. Oh no, I'm running out of time. I need to get back to the wardens. 
Now, I rushed out of the ancient city as fast as I could to find my father and the other wardens. I shouted for them to stop, but no one listened. I blew into the warden horn, and all the wardens suddenly stopped fighting and looked at me. I hold the warden horn. You all need to stop right now. That horn has no meaning anymore. We will defeat Dolo's forces so we can focus on Abaddon. If we don't work together, we won't stand a chance. There is a bigger war going on, and more lives are at stake stake than we think. My father was furious and rushed at me using his fire powers. I dodged his attacks and started to fight back. I don't want to, but I will take you down if I have to. You are too weak to fight this. It's my duty. We continue to fight and eventually I began to overpower him. I can do this, father. Without all the elements and one warden, we don't stand a chance. My father stopped fighting and began to <laughs> sob. I have been afraid to lose you, but you're right. You can do this. We all believe in you. He relinquished his elemental powers to me, and I became the elemental warden once again. I gathered all of the wardens together and began to tell them what we were fighting for. Together, we were able to defeat this monster once and for all. The wardens cheered, and I sent them to the ancient city to defend the portal. But first, I need to check on Echo. On days 91 to 94, I arrived at the refugee base and saw that everyone was gone. What happened? happened? Where is everyone? Echo, where are you? Mojo, we were attacked. I can see that. Who attacked you? He told me that an army of the dead had come through and defeated all of the refugees. No, 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 no. How could I let this happen? I failed these innocent animals that I had sworn to protect and save. We believe in you, Fozo. You can still make this right. Save all the other creatures that you can. Echo was right. There was still time to protect the rest of the families that lived in this world. I had ended the war war, but there was still a final battle to be fought. On days 95 to 99, I rushed to the ancient city and saw the wardens were fighting with an army of the dead. I stepped in and began to lead the charges against the army. With my combined elements, I was able to use my sonic boom and cut through the army. I saw Abaddon making his way toward the portal, and I knew I was running out of time before the world would be converted into Skulk. We will hold off the army. You need to stop Abaddon before it's too late. Just be careful. I made my way to the portal and saw him trying to use a spell to bring the other side to our world. Stop what you're doing. You stand no chance against me now. It is you that has lost, Fozo. The elements cannot stop the inevitable. He cast his spell and suddenly the ancient city began to be covered in skulk. No! I began to use my elemental powers to fight against him, but he was resilient and his attack still hurt quite a bit. My father rushed to my side and began to fight him with me. Together, we can stop him. I prepared to hit him with my elemental sonic boom, but he jumped into the portal. Oh man, I have to go after him, father. I just have to. I need to end this once and for all. On day 100, I followed Abaddon and we were inside of his lair. Abaddon, surrender! We don't have to fight anymore. I told Abaddon that I wanted to make amends for the mistakes that the wardens made against him. We can still save you. Save me? You still think I can be saved? I want nothing but to destroy all of you. He rushed at me and started to use his fire abilities. I will stop you to save the world. He was strong and I was taking a lot of damage, but I had to fight him off. I knew everyone was counting on me to stop him. I froze him with my ice blast and then used my fire on him. Finally, I pushed him back with an air blast and stunned him with my electricity. How is this possible? Now was my chance. I used my elemental shell, and when it connected, Abaddon was defeated. No! The world was saved from war, and all of the corruption converted back to the other side of the portal. On day one, I smashed out of a block of ice as a warden. Wait, I'm an ice warden and I have 20 hearts? I looked around and realized that I was on top of a mountain. I didn't have much time to think as the sky went dark and a large skeleton appeared. Wait a second, do I know you? You pesky warden, you will pay for what you've done to my vision. Wait, what did I do? I can't even remember a thing. The skeleton started to attack me. I was about to fight back when one of his attacks hit me. Ah! 
that hurt. I had no choice but to run away with the terrifying lich chasing after me. Why was he so angry with me? And more importantly, why was I made out of ice? On day two, I was trying to make my way out of the cold biome, but everywhere I went, there seemed to be more snow. I realized I was in the middle of a desert, but there was snow falling and accumulating here. The entire world had been encased in this massive blizzard. Before I could even think, a stray with a group of ice skeletons showed up. <laughs> Man, d -d defeat the warden. He must pay for what he did to the ice lich. The group of skeletons started to rush at me and shoot arrows. Charge! I felt a surge of energy coming from inside of me, and I unleashed an ice sonic boom, taking many of the skeletons down. I continued to fight with them until only the stray was left. Wow, well, we'll be back, you big scary little beast, and with greater numbers too. This isn't the last time that you have seen of me. And what was that guy's deal? Oh, I can't think of this right now. I continued on my journey to hopefully find something that wasn't affected by this blizzard. On day three, as I was traveling through the blizzard, I noticed something shining in the ice. I made my way closer and noticed there were tools stuck inside. I broke the ice and was able to gather an entire set of tools. These were some kind of special ice tools. I wonder how long these have been trapped here. I continued to travel and I started to think that I wasn't going to be able to make it out of the storm anytime soon. I need to build a base. I went out and gathered materials from an area around me. I was even able to gather some coal. Man, it's freezing. Once I had enough materials, I began to build the base. It wasn't much, but it would at least keep me out of the cold. I tried to remember back before this world was covered in ice. How did this happen? Was I involved? You'll never get away with this. Do you understand me? Ha! Oh, man, wait a minute. I remember fighting with that lich in a much different world before everything had turned into ice. This has to be why I can't remember my past. I need to figure this out sooner rather than later. On day four, I continued to search for a break in the storm. As I traveled, I noticed a group of iced over zombies attacking a squirrel and a seal. I rushed toward them to save them. Leave them alone, you monsters. Lucky for me, these guys were just as weak as the skeletons. It didn't take long until I'd taken all of them down. Are you guys okay? I hope you weren't harmed. A warden? Man, thanks for saving us. We really owe you one. S something is happening in m m my home. The squirrel told me he had run into the seal while looking for help after fleeing from his home. I gave him the coordinates to my base and quickly rushed off toward where he said his home was. When I arrived at this forest, I noticed that it was the first area that was not completely covered by a blizzard. Man, this is awesome. I even saw regular chickens running around. Wait, what's going on? What's that noise? I spoke too soon because I started hearing rumblings and noticed that the biome was slowly changing and everything was starting to be covered in snow. No! I even noticed that the group of chickens in the area had been covered in a layer of ice as well. This doesn't seem normal. It seemed like the storm was spreading and I was going to need to get to the bottom of it. On day five, I spotted a village and began to make my way toward it. I needed to see if there's any information that I can get about this storm. As I got closer, I noticed that some of the villagers were all also covered in ice. Wait, so is this happening to every single mob? I saw some of them were even completely trapped in as well. I walked up to one of the ice villagers. Hey, what happened here? Uh, warden! Oh, our people call him Avala. Avala? He described to me the skeleton I saw on day one and how he had been slowly converting the entire world to this eternal winter. That isn't even the worst part! Villagers! The sound of raid bells began to ring out and a massive group of ice pillagers began to enter the village. They started to attack everyone, including me. I had to fight back and help defend these people. The pillagers' health appeared to be weakened, like everything else in this frozen world, but they still put up a good fight. Are they? It feels like they're doing more damage. How? After a long battle, I took out the last one. I felt myself growing stronger and whoa, what? I lost five hearts and the rest were slightly covered in ice. I then noticed that I had acquired a new snow breath. I also saw that the pillager had dropped something. It looked like a map that led out of the snow. I told the villagers that I would be back to help, but first I needed to check on my new friends at my base. On day six, I was headed home. As I got closer, I saw the group of chickens running around sporadically. Hey, these are the same guys I saw earlier. Suddenly, they all randomly 
died. Wait, what? What happened? This doesn't make any sense. Was it the weather? I have to get home. I arrived and saw the squirrel and seal were shivering in my house. They introduced themselves as Samuel and Flipper. I got to work making them places to live at. Once I had finished, both of them approached me and thanked me for my hard work. I told them that I would return soon, but I needed to see where this map led. As I was leaving, Samuel said, Bring f f f food if you f find any. I followed the map, but all I saw was more and more snow. I was starting to lose hope until I saw it. There was a break in the snow, and I was so excited to see something other than ice. I hurried through the biome, looking for any signs of food to bring home to my friends, but I ran into a player. Wow, a warden made out of ice? That's like crazy, dude. I explained to him the massive storm I just walked through. Yeah, I'm not buying it. You want to bet on it? Fine. When you find out I'm right, you owe me a bunch of food. The player told me that we had a deal and began to follow me. I led the player to the snowy area, and we began to travel through it together. The player was stunned to see it. It's real. It's all real. Well, a deal's a deal. The player dropped me a bunch of cooked beef, as well as seeds to start a farm with. Thanks. I asked him for his name, and he responded, Tony. I told Tony where I lived, and offered him a place to stay, but he said that he had bigger plans for a way to beat this. Oh, do you now, huh? Before he could elaborate more, the stray and his group of skeletons showed up. Yeah! Oh, we're back for round two, baby! You're done now! They started to fire arrows at us. Tony began to run around in panic while I fought off the skeletons. These guys seem to be way tougher than the first time. How? I was able to fight off all the skeletons before turning to see Ned was leading Tony away from us. You're my prisoner. You hear me? You, you player. Suck the suck, warden. A little help here, warden. This guy is seriously so annoying. I chased after him and noticed we were approaching a large ice temple. On day eight, I entered the ice temple trying to catch up to tony finally ned let him go and i shot a sonic boom at him but missed i gotta get out of here he ran off before i could stop him oh man looks like i'm on my own i started to search the temple for any signs of ned until i entered a large room standing in the middle of it was the giant skeleton from before this guy again before i could prepare to fight he said great to see you again i'm happy you made it here after all none of this could have been done without you you. Without me? What did that mean? The skeleton refused to answer, but began to attack me. I started to fight back. Even with my new resistance, his attacks were still hurting me a lot. I had no choice but to run away. I used my ice breath to freeze him in place so I could escape. As I was traveling back to base, I started to think about what he had said. None of this could have been done without you. It worked. It worked. I returned to my base, so it was me. I caused everything. This eternal winter is my fault. How could I have done something so foolish? Was I a, a bad guy? And if that wasn't bad enough, Flipper ran up to me, extremely distraught, and began to say, Samuel, he, he's gone. What? How? How? How, how, how is that even possible? He, he was okay when I left. She continued to say that shortly after I left, he began to complain that he wasn't feeling great. I think I'm beginning to feel weak as well. I thought back to those chickens. They were covered in a layer of ice and died quickly after. The ice, it seems to be some kind of illness, and that's what's killing mobs. That's why I lost my heart. All of this is making sense now. I looked at Flipper. She was upset by the loss of her friend, so together, we made a small gravesite for Samuel. I knew I had to do something to keep her safe. I hope because she was a seal, she would be able to withstand the ice for longer. To be safe, we started to upgrade the base to keep everyone warmer. We added extra layers of walls to our houses, as well as campfires to the center of each home. Hopefully, this will prevent the spread of whatever illness the ice is bringing. On days 11 to 12, I was trying to find sheep for wool to add extra insulation to our base when I saw something strange walking through the snow. I called out for the person to see what they were doing. They were clearly startled by my appearance, but introduced themselves as Dr. L. Curious that a mob as large as you has been plagued with this strange sickness. I told her about the fate of Samuel and the other ice mobs that I've seen. She asked me to come with her back to her base. All right, let's go. Together we traveled, and she continued to explain to me 
that she has been studying this strange weather phenomenon that has started to plague the world. Have you found anything that might be able to reverse this or at least slow down the spread? Possibly, but I don't know if it's even true. Elle told me that there were rumors of lava crystals that existed long ago, and if the legends are correct, they might be able to be used to combat the ice and its plague. She dropped me a map that would lead me to an ancient lava pool. I'm still trying to figure out how this all started. Well, let me know if you find anything about its origins, okay? I'll go and look into the lava crystals. On days 13 to 14, I stopped by my base to make sure everything was okay with Flipper. I didn't need another one of my friends being sick. I'm starting to feel better thanks to all the base upgrades. Glad to hear. I headed off toward the lava pit, hoping that the storm wouldn't get any worse and she would be safe. I made my way farther into the snow biome. I wondered how all the mobs affected by this would be feeling. <laughs> I heard laughing and turned to see two snow golems throwing snowballs at each other. They looked like they were having a blast. Hey, what's going on? Isn't this great? We go around everywhere. No issues now. How is this great? The entire world is covered in snow and everyone seems to be falling sick and dying from it. Yeah, everyone but us. It's the snow golems time to thrive now, baby. <laughs> They laughed and continued to play. Wow, I guess some people were enjoying this after all. On days 15 to 16, I made it to the lava pool that was on the map. I noticed that there were a lot of cows that had been iced over. When I asked them how they were feeling, they said they didn't feel any different than before. Huh, I wonder if the lava was preventing the ice from taking over their bodies. Hmm, that might just work for the villagers and my base. One problem though, how was I gonna be able to see if those crystals were inside the lava? I began to use my ice breath on the lava and slowly converted it all into ice. The cows were shocked and began to yell at me, but then I noticed there was something red inside of the ice. I broke the ice and received the lava crystal. The cows were amazed to see what I found, and I decided to test it out. I used the crystal on the ice and recreated the entire lava pool. The cows were extremely happy to see their lava had been restored. This could totally help the villagers. I told the cows to stay warm and headed off toward the village to see what could be done. On day 17 to 18, I arrived at the village and started to show off the ice crystals to all of the people. I approached the villagers that were encased in ice and was able to break them out of it. The villagers began to thank me and I decided to take it one step further. I tried to use the crystal to remove the illness that was covering the villagers. Unfortunately, it didn't work. I was really hoping it would. You know what? Maybe there are more of these that I can combine and make it more powerful. I asked the villagers if they needed anything before I left and they said, uh, Our farm has frozen over and we are starting to run out of food. I was able to restore that entire lava pool with the crystals. I wonder if the same can be done for the farm. I used the crystal and yes, the farmland was restored to fertile soil again. I helped the villagers replant their seeds. For good measure, I created lava pools near the farm to prevent the blizzard from reclaiming it. The villagers were extremely grateful for my hard work and shared some of their bread with me. I headed off back toward my base. On days 19 to 20, I saw the cows from the lava pit. Hey guys, by the way, do you want a better place to live? They appreciated my offer and returned to my base with me. When I arrived, I built a pen for them at my base and made sure to add campfires to keep them warm throughout the blizzard. I had confidence that with this, they could eventually thaw from their sickness and recover. I checked on Flipper to see how she was doing and showed her the lava crystal. That's great news, Fozo. I'm starting to feel better as well, thanks to all your help. I gave her some of the bread that the villagers had given me. I promise, Flipper, I'm gonna make everything right. I'm just gonna need more time. I didn't know if even I believed what I was saying, but I headed to talk to Dr. L. I needed to show her what I was able to find. Hey, uh, super scary witch, sir. I, I, I believe I've located a piece of your staff. Good. Maybe there's a way we can repair it. This warden is starting to get on my nerves. You deal with him while I go and retrieve it. Aw, oh, man. As you wish. On days 21 to 23, I entered Dr. L's lab and presented her with the lava crystal. She was excited to see that they really did exist and asked me if I'd used it. I told her what I had been able to accomplish at the village, but revealed it had not been enough to cure the villagers. I will need more time to find the location of the others, but in the meantime, we will figure out what caused this. I was nervous to tell her, but I felt I had no other choice. I began to confess to L that I had battled with the Lich before. In doing so, I hit him with a sonic boom that appeared to let out a massive 
massive amount of energy and caused the blizzard. Elle looked at me in utter shock, and I thought that she was going to throw me out. But to my surprise, she said, That is not possible. She explained to me that the massive flash of light and energy had happened many years ago. Wait, what? What do you mean many years ago? That was long before the blizzard started to spread. I started to feel unwell. How long had I been trapped in that ice? While I was trapped, I let Avalis spread his plague across the world. Had I really doomed all those creatures on Earth with my mistake. On days 24 to 26, I returned to my base and noticed that all the pens I had built for the cows were empty. I looked around at my empty base. Flipper! Flipper! Where are you? I called out for her, and luckily, she was inside of our home. What is it, Fozo? I told her that I was just glad to see her. Hey, do you need anything? She told me that she had finished all the food we had and was gonna need more. Together, we began to build a farm using the lava crystal to thaw and restore the area so we can plant the seeds. Afterwards, I headed out in search of any information on the lava crystals when I ran into the stray again. What do you want? Oh, Ice Warden! Behold the monster that will slay you for the witch! Small skeleton walked out from behind him and moved at a pace of a snail toward me. Wait, you can't be serious. You're talking about this little thing? Uh, fight the skeleton! I laughed until the skeleton was right in front of me and launched me in the air. Whoa! That guy had some serious fight in him. I lost most of my health and had no choice but to run away. Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's happening now, buddy? <laughs> I see you have one of my crystals. <laughs> <laughs> On days 27 to 29, I realized with my reduced hearts, I was gonna need something to protect myself from attacks. I tried to search the ice to see if there was anything stuck in it, but I had no luck. I went to a cave and began to mine for iron. I collected some and smelted it down to make myself a chest plate and a helmet. I was about to leave until I noticed there was a large pool of lava behind me. And wait a second, I have an idea. I had a plan that would help the villagers. I set off to the village to tell them my plans, but when I got there, it was swarming with pillagers. We want this Destroy this village if you don't do as I say. I looked around at all the scared people. Man, I had to protect them. Okay, what do you want from me? He said that I was to come with them to their outpost and talk to their leader right now. Fine, let's move then. On days 30 to 32, we reached the pillager outpost and I saw that they had already captured many creatures. There were both alleys and iron golems in cages. I knew I had to help them, but now was not the time. The pillager brought me in front of their leader and he said, you will work with us to take over this frozen wasteland. He explained to me that unlike the other mobs, the pillagers adapted quickly to harsh environments. Together, we will be able to conquer it even quicker. Yeah, I'd rather not do that. You people make me sick. You're nothing but bullies who prey on the weak, and I am not that. Suit yourself, then. The leader took out a, a lava crystal? He used it to make a massive lava pit and told the guards to push me in. Oh, no. I was terrified. I started to panic as I hit the lava. Ah! Wait a second. I'm a warden, and it's obvious that everyone knows that lava doesn't hurt me. I took out all the guards with ease and then used my sonic boom to take out the leader and steal his ice crystals. As I was leaving the base, I made sure to free all of the creatures that had been captured and headed back. So what do we do now? I don't know. Travel? On days 33 to 35, I returned back to my base and noticed that there were more animal pens with sheep in them. Hey, Flipper, did you do this when I was gone? Yes. While you were gone, sheep had wandered into the base and needed a place to stay. So I built this for them. Hey, by the way, are you uh, still okay? She told me that she had never been happier with the sheep around. I guess they'll provide you some company while I'm gone trying to fix this mess. I headed off to see Dr. L. I arrived at her base and showed her the second lava crystal. Dr. L eagerly took them and combined them for me. And now, some bad news. Oh no. She told me that she was able to locate two of the lava crystals from her research. But since the pillager leader had one, she didn't know the one he had taken. One of them is located somewhere in the Badlands and the other is stuck in the nether. The nether, huh? Good to know. I thanked her for the information and headed out. Before I went to the Badlands, I was gonna need to see what this could do for the villagers. On the way to the villagers, I made a quick pit stop at a near cave and grabbed some iron. I used the iron to craft some buckets and then continued on my travels. Once I arrived, 
damage. I tried the lava crystal on the villagers and yes, it worked. I was able to cure the villagers. I then told them my plan to try and slow down the spread of the blizzard and prevent them from catching this illness again. I started by helping the villagers dig a large trench around the outside of the village before passing buckets out to them. We then set off to the massive lava pool and began to fill the buckets. We returned and slowly started to fill the trench in with lava. If my theory was correct, this should prevent more of the spread. Thank you so much for everything you have done for us. Don't sweat it, guys. Just happy to help. You fool! You must stop this warden at once before it's too late! I'm trying my best, sir! Try harder! On days 39 to 41, I was traveling to the Badlands when I spotted someone who looked familiar. It was Tony, except he had a massive base with a lot of animals and, and a huge farm. Wait a minute, what are you doing? It's the end of the world. I just know it. I need to be prepared to survive. There's other ways that you can help out. You don't need to just hoard food and shelter. The man didn't want to hear anything about it. He just got back to work. All right, well, that guy is seriously weird. I continued to the Badlands and began to search for any lava pools or something that could contain the lava crystal. Suddenly, Ned and his tiny skeleton appeared and ambushed me and began to attack. I was more prepared than ever, though, to fight the skeleton, so I dodged his slow attacks and used the lava crystal on him. Because he was made out of ice, it was super effective, and I was able to take him down with no problem. This is not the last that you've seen of the great Ned! The ice lich will rise, and you shall fight! He rushed away. What a weirdo, man. After defeating the skeleton, I noticed. Oh, man. I upgraded again. I lost another five hearts. I had to continue on my journey. I need to find those lava crystals before it was too late. On days 42 to 44, I spotted a massive structure in the Badlands. I entered what appeared to be a temple and started to look around for the crystal. I began to feel like something was watching me. Hello? The monster has entered temple. I looked up and spotted strange ghosts flying above my head. I prepared for a fight, but they didn't attack. They just continued to mock me. You unleashed a storm and killed your friends. How could you live with yourself? What? That's not true. Why are you saying that? You have doomed this world. All of your friends will perish, and it is your fault. I know I made a mistake, but those small mistakes don't define who you are, and this one is not gonna define me. I will make this right. I will be the savior this world needs. There was a large rumbling, and as I looked up, the spirits all disappeared. I saw a large door had opened, and I entered it. There was a sign that read lava crystal, pointing toward an item frame. Huh, well, that seems easy enough. I rushed towards it, but it was empty. Man, so much for the lava crystal in the Badlands. On days 45 to 47, I exited the temple and spotted the lich flying around. Ned must have given away my position to him. Come on out, Ice Warden. This ends now. I wanted a fight, but I was afraid. I only had 10 hearts. I slowly made my way through the Badlands. Eventually, I made it out, and then I headed back toward home. Once I was back at my base, I noticed that Flipper was outside. She was waiting for me, so I I asked her what was wrong. Things are starting to get really cold. The sheep have been complaining about it, and I'm feeling it as well. Yeah, I know. It's not getting any better as the days go on. I decided it was best to use the lava crystals to create small pools of lava throughout the base and hoped it would alleviate some of the cold. Flipper thanked me for my work, and I headed off to a cave to finish my iron armor set. I wanted to be prepared for when the lich confronted me next. After finishing my armor, I used one of the buckets I had to grab some lava and returned to my base to create a nether portal. Once that portal was finished, I knew that I had to go to the next destination of the crystal. I entered the nether and... What? How is this possible? Everything was covered in snow and ice? Can the lich travel across dimensions too? I started to search the nether for any signs of the lava crystal, but the more I traveled, all I saw was more and more snow. I ran into a group of piglins, and I asked them if they knew anything about the lava crystals. An ice warden! The piglin asked if I knew anything about the ice. I caught them up on everything I knew. So yeah, that's when I hit the lich's staff and unleashed this terrible storm all over the world. You what? No, wait. You don't understand. It was an accident. The piglins began to attack me, and I was overwhelmed. Ugh, I had to surrender. Stop, guys. Perfect. My staff is almost ready.
On days 51 and 53, the piglins took me back to their bastion. They began to question me more and more about what I knew about the storm. I explained to them everything and how it wasn't my fault. Please, you guys gotta believe me. The piglins were reluctant. I showed them the lava crystals I had already gotten, and they were shocked. You guys just need to listen to me, okay? I caused this mess, but I'm trying to fix it for me and for everyone else. The piglins looked at one another and began to discuss. Finally, a brute spoke to me. We will show you where the crystal is, but in return, you must help us. I agreed, and a piglin led me to another fortress. I entered and was greeted by a group of ice monsters who started to attack me. Somehow, they had replaced the blazes in the fortress. I had to fight back using everything I had and was able to take them down thanks to the piglin's help. I searched the fortress, and in one of the chests, I found the crystal. We headed back to the bastion, and I used its powers to remove all the ice and snow from the area. Wow. The piglins thanked me, and I told told them their help would not be forgotten. After leaving the nether, I returned to base to see Dr. L was waiting for me. She started to tell me that she finally understood what the Lich's plan was. So when you struck his staff with your sonic boom, you didn't actually destroy it. Instead, you sent his ice crystals all over the world. I have managed to track one of the crystals to the jungle, but the Lich was there so I stayed hidden while he grabbed the crystal. She thought that he was going to use the crystal and unleash its power once again. But strangely, he didn't. If the Lich has already covered most of the world in ice, what more could he be trying to accomplish? L told me that at the center of the world was the largest volcano to ever exist. If the Lich were to freeze this, all of Minecraft would permanently endure the same fate as what we were experiencing. I showed her the lava crystal I found in the nether, and she gladly combined it with the other two. We began to formulate a plan to ensure the survival of everyone on Earth. I would go and acquire the final lava crystal, while Dr. L took it upon herself to find the other crystals before the Lich got his hands on them. Sounds like a plan. We went our separate ways, hoping to see each other again. On days 57 to 59, I returned to the village with the three lava crystals. I stood in the center to let out a massive sonic boom. As I looked around, I noticed that all of the snow was gone from the area. It worked! I was finally able to get rid of the snow. The villagers cheered with joy, but I told them our fight for survival was far from over. I began to tell them about the volcano. Does anyone have any information about it? Yes, there was once an explorer from our village who had found that volcano. He continued to tell us the villager had traveled to many areas of the world and left detailed maps about the places. He dropped me a map and wished me luck on my journey. I hope you find what you are looking for or whatever. I thank the villager for all they have done and set out toward the volcano. So you've decided to aid the Ice Warden, then you must be punished! On day 60 to 62, I was traveling toward the volcano when I passed by Tony's base. He was standing outside what appeared to be a large bunker entrance. Hey, what are you doing? I'm gonna wait out this storm. I have everything I need inside. Well, what are you wearing? This suit should keep me warm throughout the storm, though. I tried to explain to the man that the suit he was wearing was for radiation. That's not gonna do anything for the cold. I can tell he had no idea what I was talking about. But I reminded him that he could provide more value helping than hiding. There's no point. It's better to wait out things like this than fight back. I don't know if that's the right way to think about it. Listen, everyone's terrified of what the future holds, but only few are brave enough to fight back against it and change it. You could choose to live in fear, or you can be strong and fight on. I headed off toward the volcano, hoping that Tony would listen to what I was saying. I made it, and it was even more massive than I'd expected it to be. Wow, I can see how this provides heat to the world. I began to explore, and eventually found an entrance to it. I started to search the area within the volcano. Eventually, I came across a note that read, To whoever finds this armor, I hope it suits you well. Haha, <laughs> it seems to have properties of fire. Ooh. I opened the chest I found alongside the note and discovered a suit of armor within. I equipped the armor and realized that all of my hearts had been restored. I had 20 hearts and the ice was removed. It wasn't the lava crystal, but at least I had all my health back. Amazing. I headed back to base to tell L about what I had found. You and your warden friend are too late. You will never succeed.
On day 66 to 68, I returned to base and noticed that all the sheep had lost their wool. I saw Flipper and she slowly approached me. Things are starting to get worse, Fozo. Flipper, oh man, what happened to all the lava? She told me that the lava was no longer effective against the storm. Flipper and I quickly made upgrades to our houses, adding extra layers of walls. We finally finished. Hey. Have you heard anything back from Dr. L? Before she can answer, we were interrupted by Ned arriving. Ah, uh, so we found your stupid base, you warden! Ah, uh, you! What do you want? Here to challenge me once again with your pathetic minions? Oh, but on the contrary! I came here to ask you where your friends were! <laughs> L, she must be in danger. I rushed after Ned, following right behind him. On days 69 to 71, I followed Ned to a strange building in the snow. I wasn't able to tell what it was from the outside. As I was about to enter, I finally realized it was a prison made out of ice. I saw L was in a cage. Ah, the Lynch granted me some of his powers. He knew that you would follow me. You are so gullible. Suddenly, the stray began to grow large. Ned began to strike me from a distance using his bow, and I used my sonic boom and ice breath, freezing him in place. Ah, jeez! He took out a sword and rushed at me, attacking me at all angles. Our fight continued for some time, but my new armor rebuffed all of his attacks. Eventually, he started to grow weak. Door days of harming the innocent end now! Wait, wait! No! I struck him down, and he was defeated. I freed Elle from her cage, and she told me that she found something within the prison that can wait. First, we need to get you back to safety. On days 72 to 74, we arrived back at the base, and Dr. Elle prepared to head back to her lab. But I stopped her. You need to stay here. The Lich knows that you work with me, and if something happens to you, then all hope will be lost. We began to work, building Elle a place to stay at my base. With Elle secured, I asked her what she found in the prison, and she revealed that it was a map to the final lava crystal. That's amazing news. I can get the crystal back before the Lich completes his staff, and we can finally end this. Let's not celebrate just yet. Look at your friend. My friend? I saw Flipper slowly making her way out of the base. It was clear that the illness was starting to take a toll on her. Things seem to be getting worse. The sheep died while you were gone. I turned and noticed that they were all missing from their pens. I tried to use my lava crystals on Flipper, but it didn't seem to have any effect. It was clear that I was running out of time. Flipper, you are coming with me. I need you by my side in case we find that lava crystal. I need to make sure you're safe. Together, we headed off toward its location. Flipper and I arrived to the location on the map. We were standing in front of a large desert temple, quickly made our way inside, and began to search for the lava crystal. There was a large rumbling sound, and a massive skeleton appeared in front of us. I froze the skeleton in place, then tried to hit him with my sonic boom. It turned its attention toward Flipper, and began to charge at her. Leave her alone! I blocked the skeleton from Flipper, and continued to attack him, until I finally took the monster down. <laughs> Suddenly, the lich appeared. Did you really think the lava crystal was here? You are a fool! The lich cast a spell, and the temple began to collapse on us. I ran toward Flipper to protect her from the debris. On day 78 to 80, Flipper and I were trapped inside the collapsed structure. I looked at her. She was getting weaker. The lich was always one step ahead of me, and I fell directly right into his trap. We lost. It's over. I doomed the world to start with, and I was too weak to save us from it. Fozo, you can still do this. The mistakes you made in the past won't change the future. You're the bravest person I know. You just have to be strong. She passed out in front of me. Flipper, Flipper! Oh man, maybe she was right. There was still time to fix this. There has to be. I summon all the remaining energy I have for one last sonic boom and use it to clear a path. I did it. Together, we left. We returned to base, but it was in total ruins. The Lich was there, attacking Dr. L. I jumped into action, fighting against him with everything that I had. I was far more prepared for this fight than I had ever been. The Lich's attacks did less damage to me with my lava armor, and I can tell that he was getting scared. I took out my lava crystal and tried to use it on him, but he immediately started attacking everyone. I heard a scream, and I turned to see Dr. L was hit with one of his attacks, and she was fatally wounded. L, no! The lich fled from my base, and I rushed to L's side. I asked her if there was anything that I could do to help. 
but she just shook her head. Go to the village. Ask where to find the lob crystal. We may still have some time. She died from her injuries and I was left there, filled with sadness. I took this time to repair any damages the Lich had done to my base or my friend's homes. And then I made her a small monument. You will not be forgotten. I can promise you that. After saying my final goodbyes, I sought out Flipper. She was still very weak and I knew that she didn't have much time left. I decided it was best to leave her at my base and I built her extra campfires for warmth. Hang in there. I'll be back soon. Why is the village covered in snow? Where is everyone? I slowly realized that the Lich must have attacked them as well. No! I put all these people in harm's way, trying to make things right, and look what they got for trusting me. It was the lowest I had ever felt. I was prepared to leave when I noticed a note on the ground, and it talked about the lava crystal. The villagers must have been looking for it as well. So many people have been hurt because of me, but maybe I can still save everyone else. On days 86 to 90, I began to search the lush cave the note had led me to. I could tell that the lich was afraid of the crystal and if i was able to find the last one i could hopefully put an end to all of this i saw something bright in one of the corners i ran toward it and yes the final lava crystal as i collected it i noticed that the crystal combined itself with the others with the crystal fully merged i can feel a strong surge of power and i knew i had to hurry back to flipper at last the final crystal <laughs> This world is doomed! <laughs> I was rushing back to my base and noticed that it had gotten much colder outside. Warden, come here, quick! Oh, brother, not this guy again. What do you want? Can't you see that I'm in a hurry? Tony said that he needed me to see something, so I followed him and... Wow, you must have been busy. We went inside his completed bunker. This seriously cannot be your solution. The outside world is about to be doomed forever. You're still hiding? Some of us are fighting to save the world. I'm not brave enough to fight back. You're much stronger than me, but I wanted to at least offer you a place to stay. My friend is on the verge of death. I don't have time to hide here with you. I need to hurry back before it's too late. Then at least take this. The player threw me a lot of iron and an axe. He told me maybe with these, I could forge something that would help me in my fight. I thanked him for finally helping me and left. On days 95 to 99, I arrived at base and quickly rushed to Flipper. She was totally unresponsive to what I was saying. Please work. Please work. I took out the lava crystals and used them on her. Bozo. Flipper, you're okay. How do you feel? I still feel weak, but a lot better. What happened? You don't have to worry about that now. You're gonna be okay. Listen, I think the Lich acquired the last crystal, and he's planning on freezing that volcano very shortly. I had to act fast. I realized what Tony wanted me to do. I crafted an anvil with the iron that he had given me, and then combined the axe with the lava crystals. And I was now equipped with the lava axe. Hopefully, this is everything I need. I said goodbye and began to travel toward the volcano. I arrived at the volcano on day 100, just as the sky was starting to go dark. I slowly climbed my way to the top and saw the Lich was about to unleash the power of his ice crystals. I shot my sonic boom at him, and it staggered him for a second. <laughs> You're too late, Warden. You lose. I'm here now, and I'm ready to end what I started. Is that so? Then you shall die before the rest of your friends. The Lich and I began to fight. I used my ice crystal to freeze him in place while I rushed at him with the lava axe. It was obvious that he wasn't prepared for something as powerful as this. We continued to fight, and I knew that I was slowly weakening him. The Lich hit me with a powerful attack and broke off some of the lava armor. I started to feel weak. I really failed again? No. Suddenly, I remembered what Flipper had told me. You're the bravest person I know. You just have to be strong. I felt more alive than I had ever. I didn't need my armor to defeat the Lich. I just had to believe. No! No, this is all wrong! No, this is exactly how it is supposed to be. I hit him with the axe, taking him down for good. The world was finally restored, free from the eternal winter.